Welcome, everybody. Here we are. I can hardly believe I'm saying this. We are here in the ninth annual Guadalupe gathering. Yes, it has been nine years. What? I can't believe it's been nine years. I know I said that last year when it had been eight years, but it's been nine years. And I'm just, and, you know, I'm in Mexico. What? I live in Mexico now. What is this? So I'm just amazed. Okay, hold on. Somebody's raising their hand. Let me just check. Uh, Roxana, I don't know if there's if you wrote if you raised your hand by accident. Just let me know or write in the chat. So here we are, nine years, and it's actually the tenth. Guadalupe gathering because there was one year I don't remember what year it was where I did two of them I did like a bonus one in August because we were going to Mexico where I live now but Mexico City to the actual you know shrine of Guadalupe and I don't know if any of you were there when I did that and you wrote letters and I was like I was like a little elf on my way to Mexico taking the letters to deliver to Guadalupe okay so sorry I'm I want to focus but Maureen says she can see the chat. Sophia says she can't see the chat. And I know, Emily, you said you couldn't see the chat. So I'm just, on my end, I have it so that it says everyone can see, can chat with everyone. And attendees can chat with everyone. So I believe those of you who cannot see the chat, there must be something on your end because because everybody seems to to send to everyone choose everyone in the drop down menu not just hold yep that's what i did emily it's on everyone in drop in menu so yes now sophia says she can see so emily it must be something there so i'm just letting everybody know that on my end i totally wrote put it so that hosts and panelists can chat with everyone and attendees can chat with everyone so yeah yeah, so Sophia's saying maybe try closing it and opening it, or if any of you are having trouble, log out and then log back in because it's on my end. Good. Okay. So nine years. And if you don't know, the, the number nine is the year, the number of completion. It's the number of mastery. So there's something that's coming together today for us on this ninth gathering. I know some of you might have been here with me. I know Jill, you I'm pretty sure you attended the first one. Some of you might have attended the first one. That was, you know, back in when I was doing it in my house, right? And then it became a virtual offering. And so here we are. And this year it's all about solar radiance. So you see my son here. That's really what our Lady of Guadalupe wanted me to focus on this year. And she was really having me focus on, you know, her auric field, right? She's like in the sun. She has the sun. She's like this beautiful sun that can walk through confusion, through illusion, through darkness, through heaviness. And yet she's always lit from within. And so the message you know, that she gave for, for this transmission today, for this Guadalupe gathering was for us to release the fear of our light, which is so powerful, right? Release. I know it can sound kind of trite and, or like, yeah, we all have light radiated, but really that's what it is. It's like releasing the fear of our light because what happens when you're fully illuminated you're seen. We we don't hide. When we're illuminated, we are seen. We're in the spotlight. We are heard. We take up space. And how many of us have had trauma and experiences that have made us fear the spotlight, right? Or fear taking up space or fear being seen. Or perhaps it has felt like being a good person meant being in the background, right? Like not taking up space. So Guadalupe, our you know beautiful uh, divine mother that she is, the message. You know, every year she's had a message, and this year, you know, I'll read it to you. This is what she said: "Your light protects you and the world." So I thought that was really powerful. Not only is it protecting us, our light is protecting us. It's protecting the world. So it's that protective element of our light. 
It's now time to release the fear of its power and let it shine brightly. So that's really powerful as well, right? The, the fear we have of our own light, the fear others can have of our own light and hence their own light. So this is what Guadalupe is guiding us to this year, to really commit and devote our presence you know, to be seen. And of course, when the Divine Mother asks something of us, she doesn't leave us without resources, right? If she's asking this from us, then she is blessing us, right? She's here to remove the blocks that we have to really radiating that light and stepping into the, the blessings of the sun, right? The solar radiance. And what's really interesting, I spoke about this a little bit in November when my good friend Zoe and I did that YouTube transmission, how if you notice Guadalupe, Our Lady of Guadalupe, she's standing on the moon and she's illuminated in the sun, right? And her cloak has stars, which we prob you probably know, right? The sun is a star. So she is a solar goddess. She's a solar divine being. The, you know, her standing on the moon, it's not to say that the moon is bad by any means. Obviously, we connect with the full moon and all of those things. The cycles of the moon, there is a time and a place for that, right? For respecting and honoring the cycles of our life. But Guadalupe, I really believe, and so many of these divine beings have come to even bring, take us to that next level of even as we move through the cycles of our life, even as we experience death and rebirth, even as we experience endings and beginnings, the ending of a year, the beginning of a new year, that we also throughout all of that, we hold steady in our light, that our light does not waver, that our trust and faith becomes that beacon of light. That's what she's really activating for us today. And so if you are new to me, because I know several people uh, joined today's transmission, and many of you will be seeing the replay. My name is Lisa Espinosa. I probably should have started with that. But I am a priestess and spiritual coach that focuses on career, right? Focuses on you sharing your medicine and your career. That doesn't mean that that's all I talk about. In fact, with my clients, we often talk about a whole bunch of other things, that need to be cleared up and come into balance and harmony before, you know, before your soul fully opens the doors to your career, right? Your soul might know, oh, there's these things, these lessons that need to be healed in order for you to really share your unique medicine with the world. And so the way I help my clients with that is really ultimately to help them, my clients, my students, everyone who's drawn to my work to really release the clutter, right? A lot of it emotional, right? Emotional clutter, emotional burdens, emotional wounds, emotional baggage, emotional trauma, emotional patterns and programming that make it hard for you to access your soul's guidance, right? For you to not only access it, but take action on your soul's guidance, because it really isn't helpful if we can hear our soul's guidance, but we don't take action on it, right? Or if we're ready to take action, but our emotions are so loud. They cause so much friction, so much um, frenzied energy inside that it almost, it's like it interferes with our antenna, right? And then we can't fully hear or discern what our soul is guiding us to do. And along with that, I also, part of a big part of what I do is really me and help also help my clients and students, those who are wanting to, to really connect deeply with their mentors in, in high places, right? With the divine beings like Our Lady of Guadalupe, who are here as your allies, right? They're here as your mentors. They're not really interested in us putting them in a pedestal. Now we can do that, right? I have a very strong devotion to Our Lady of Guadalupe and, you know, my husband, Craig, he was, we were walking through the historic center here yesterday and 
he was saying, I'm going to start a YouTube channel called Geeking Out on Guadalupe. And I'm just going to follow you around with a camera. And every time you see Guadalupe and you're like, get so excited, it's just going to be caught on camera. And I was like, but he's right. Cause like literally that's, I, I feel such a strong connection, such a strong. So it can feel to me like, oh, I'm putting her on a pedestal. But she reminds me over and over and over that it's not about that. That it's about Guadalupe, Mother Mary, Kuan Yin, Green Tara, all of those divine beings. They're mirrors for us. That's what they're here for. So when Guadalupe, all of her elements, right? The sun, that auric field of the sun behind her, her cloak of stars, her standing on the moon, right? The angel, right? That's holding her robe, her wearing like a pregnancy, her, her robe is... Um, a robe that of royalty, but also showing a woman that is pregnant, right? There's so much that she's mirroring. And I, I don't mean that she's mirroring us being pregnant, like with a child, that might be true for some of you, absolutely. But more than that is the pregnancy with our divine creations, which include birthing ourselves, right? So these beautiful divine beings, they're mirrors. And, and Guadalupe, as I reflected on doing this for nine consecutive years, I remember when she, that, that idea first came into my heart and I was like, what are we going to do in this? And, and first of all, I wanted to, to be clear that I wasn't like doing some sort of Catholic gathering, not that you're, you know, any religion or spiritual tradition is welcome here, but I wasn't, that wasn't what this was going to be. And you know, I know a lot of people are surprised to hear this, but I didn't grow up with a devotion to Guadalupe, even though my parents are Mexican and I know she appeared here in Mexico and there's a strong, strong devotion to her in Mexico. My parents were really, what people would call lapsed Catholics, I guess, you know, they totally believed in Catholicism, but they didn't go to church and we had no image of Guadalupe. I of course had seen her, but I wasn't like, I saw that growing up or I experienced that growing up. She came to my conscious awareness as an adult, as an adult during a time where I was going through a lot of uh, trauma, I guess, a lot of confusion. I was like, it was in this moment where I was stepping out of a very toxic situation. It was like I had, and I'm sharing this with you as I prepared. She wanted me to share this with you for you to see where it echoes in your life, right? So it was like, this toxic, maybe toxic is too big a word for you. Maybe for you, it's just a situation you've outgrown. It was a situation in my life I definitely had outgrown. It was definitely toxic. And it was like my eyes had been opened to see that. Like, oh my gosh, I'm in this really toxic situation. But I didn't know the way out of it. I was in, at that time in my life, I had a very small outer circle and that circle was all in this toxic situation. So they didn't see it as toxic to them. It was normal. And I didn't have the tools I have today. I had never seen a therapist before in my life. It was a very, it was like, you know, the best of times, it was the worst of times, right? It was the best of times because I was waking up, like seeing, oh my gosh, I'm a really intense situation, really toxic. I need to get out of this. It was the worst of times because I was like, how in the world am I going to get out of this? Right. So for you, whatever this is for you, it might not be as extreme, right? My life is certainly in, in a whole different place now, but there might be some situation in your life where you're like, I've outgrown this. Maybe it's not toxic, but you've just outgrown it. You're like, I, this is not a fit anymore, but maybe you're like, well, how do I get out of it? Or maybe you know how to get out of it, but you're like, I'm scared. You know, well, how will I make money? You know, will other people judge me? Probably yes, because that's just part of the human journey. And so it was at that time where I was in the midst of that. And I was at that time connected to a very, very dogmatic, I would call toxic branch of the Catholic Church, let's just say. I don't feel the need to name it. I had never heard of it. So it's not one of those common ones that you hear of that I had been connected with for the previous seven years and you know it, it was part of the toxicity I was leaving and they this is how amazing Guadalupe is right and divine beings 
they had a little card with the image of Guadalupe. And in the back, it had some prayer that I did not resonate with at all. But I had been handed that and I had that in my purse. And for whatever reason, when I looked at that image, even though I had looked at that image many, many times before and just had never spoken to me, I really connected with it. And I felt like, okay, she's like my mother, my divine mother, because I have no one else to turn to. I have no one else who can help me. I have no one else that that can guide me. I Part of me was still very enmeshed in the toxic, uh, toxic energy of that church. And so part of me was doubting myself, was like, am I right? Maybe they're the ones that are right. But I was like, well, they believe in you. At least they have a picture of you. So I'm going to trust you to guide me. And that began, so I was, how old was I then? Like 25 years old. That began my journey with Guadalupe, right? Talking to her on this little card. And then a year later, going to the Basilica in Mexico City with some toxic people to, and being there and praying from my heart. I've shared that story before, right? Of just like, please, please guide me. If I'm supposed to get out of this situation, show me the way because I have no idea how to get out of it. I'm doubting myself. I've, I've told you before, I had this beautiful ring that had been passed down from my family and I took it off, right? And I was like, I just put it in this altar for Guadalupe there in the Basilica in Mexico. It was like a it wasn't the the image of her, but it was this other statue and all these people had thrown stuff in there. You could bring offerings. And so I took this ring that was so special to me. I don't know why. And it wasn't like Guadalupe was asking me to do that, but it was like, I felt like I needed some sort of like deep, like, no, I, I really, this is how much this means to me. Please guide me, show me the way. And I offered her that ring, right? I tossed it in there. I mean, part of me thought it was crazy. It was like a family heirloom. And I don't have a lot of family heirlooms, right? It was this beautiful ring made of white gold. And I've often thought about that. Like, I feel like that was an initiation, right? And then having that experience and then years later, moving to that home that some of you knew and then hearing her say, gather people together around my feast day, and me being like, okay, I will, but I don't really know what we're going to do. And, and then it was really like, you're gathering the healers, you're bringing the healers, the priestesses, the shamans, the medicine women, you're bringing them here. You're gathering them together, not to put her on a pedestal and pray to her. I mean, we can totally do that. There's nothing wrong with that if you're called to do that. Because I love walking around the churches here in Mexico and just finding different altars to her and, and just talking to her and but she said, but what it was for, it was for her to bless us, for her to clear all the baggage that we've been carrying. And you know, as I enter 2024, ready to finish my book, Priestess Rise Up, as I've been looking at it, you know, what came this morning, I just ac accidentally opened it. And I opened it to this image and the phrase on the top was the priestesses have suffered enough. And you can fill in the blank, the healers have suffered enough the teachers have suffered enough the holy women have suffered enough and that's what guadalupe has been doing for us every year year after year after year after year she's been clearing the attachment that we have to suffering the programming that has made us believe that we have to suffer for our divinity for our sovereignty for our blessing for our abundance to be good people to be in service and whether this is your ninth time joining me or your first time it doesn't matter. It's perfect when you've arrived, right? So that is why we're here. And so it's perfect that on this ninth year, what is her message is release the fear of your light. Because there's a lot of darkness in the world. There's a lot of illusion. There's a lot of heaviness. And we are meant to be the light, not from an egotistical place, from a, from a place of love. And so along with that, as we come into our heart and we start with our first meditation, I invite you to, you know, I, I, the subject line of the last invitation was because I was meditating. I was really emotional this morning and I was like, oh my gosh. But it was, I was meditating with Guadalupe in one of my many altars to Guadalupe I have here. And, and she said, you know, bring... I think I was probably like, I'm so emotional. How am I going to do this? 
where she was like, you know, bring everything, bring your burdens, bring your prayers, bring your dreams. I love that she said that, right? Bring your burdens, your prayers, your dreams, bring all of it. Then I was like, oh, this isn't just for me. This is for all of us. So all of you here, you know, start to think, what are your prayers? What are your, what are the burdens that you're bringing? Nothing is too big or too small for Our Lady of Guadalupe. Nothing is too silly or mundane or serious. Remember, if for those of you who don't know the story, when she appeared in Mexico, first of all, to be clear, she appeared way before 1500 and whatever it was. Right? It was 10 years after the Spaniards conquered Mexico, right? After the Spaniards came into Mexico and decimated the indigenous tribes here. And so, but before that, when the indigenous tribes were here still, there was a great devotion to the Divine Mother, who they called Tonantzin, which is a word in Nahuatl, which means Great Mother. And so there was already such a devotion to the Divine Mother. And so when she appeared in her form as Guadalupe, the indigenous population here, the one that was left, was so open to it, right? Similar to when white buffalo woman appeared to the Sioux people. And if you don't know about White Buffalo Woman, you can look her up later. But she she came, right, appeared to uh, Juan Diego. And, you know, she said many things, but one of her most well-known things as he was, you know, he, he you know, I, part of preparing for this, I've been reading kind of the original writings, right? And, I, and he, as soon as he heard her voice, that's what he heard first, her voice, and these like animals, birds singing. And he was like, what is that? Like, he was just so drawn to it. And there stood this beautiful woman, right? And, and he was so like, oh my, he just felt so much love and so much innocence from this woman and but so much power at the same time. And, but he was worried, he had all these worries. And, and what was one of the things she said? And he, you know, she appeared to him three times, but one of them was basically like, it's okay, calm down. I've got you, right? What did she say? Am I not here who am your mother? And that was the, the message, right? That she really brought forth, not just for the people in Mexico, for the people in, of the world. All right, am I not here who am your mother? And so when she says, bring your burdens, bring your prayers, bring your dreams, she's not joking, right? She's like, bring them all. And so let's take a few breaths right now together. Coming back to your heart and the earth. Coming back to this moment, whether you're here live or watching the replay. And hear that message, am I not here? Who am your mother? Whatever is worrying you, whatever burden, whatever prayer, whatever dream is in your heart, am I not here? Who am your mother? And so I invite you to visualize your roots going down your legs, these roots of light down your legs and out the bottoms of your feet, deep, deep into the earth. And as your roots are deep into the earth, release anything. We ask your soul to help you release anything, anything that your soul's just like, it doesn't need to be here, release it. Release it into the earth for the earth to recycle and compost. If you're holding other people's energy, that's being released. And as your roots connect to the earth, you're welcoming your beautiful medicine. Everyone here. I think there are maybe 40 people signed up. I think we have 20 people. We're, there's 20 of us right now here. But all of us, all 40 of you, and I didn't check at the end, so there might have been some people that registered after. So, and, and there's often people who watch this later who didn't even register. So anyone who's ever going to watch this, all of your medicine is co-creating this space. So as your roots are deep into the earth, I welcome you to call your beautiful soul's medicine to be here. 
Call on your lineage, call on your enlightened ancestors. Call on the medicine that you know and that medicine that you don't even know. Like you might know, oh yeah, I'm a coach, I'm a therapist, or I'm really good at this, I'm really good at that, or I'm a musician, or this is, but there's aspects of your medicine, you know, that I'm hearing Guadalupe say right now, that you're not even aware of, or maybe you're you're aware of, but you're dismissing it, you're belittling it, you're not recognizing how important it is to the world. So we welcome everyone's medicine to co-create this beautiful space right now. Thank you. And I thank each of you for bringing this medicine. And if there's anyone here that's feeling unworthy or feeling like, oh, I don't have medicine to share. I have, I'm sending so much compassion to those parts of you and reminding you from the bottom of my heart and Guadalupe and everyone here that you absolutely, absolutely have a unique medicine that the world needs right now. And so as that, you're filled with your own medicine and we're filled with the collective medicine. Let it travel all the way up, up, up to the crown of your head. And at the crown of your head, your crown chakra opens like a beautiful lotus. So we're opening the crown chakra and we're asking your soul and higher self to open your crown chakra safely right now. And you are safe, you are protected. So that as we go through our transmission today, you receive all the divine downloads. And then we connect with our heart. We open, we bring our hands to our open heart. And as your heart opens like the stargate that it is, welcome your soul, welcome your higher self, welcome the different parts of you. All of them are welcome here. Your inner child, your inner children, your inner teenager, your inner adults, the parts of you that are happy to be here, the parts of you that might be distracted, the parts that might be holding grief or wounds, the parts that are excited about the new year, the parts that are scared about the new year, all of them are welcome here. And as you take a breath, just get some space. So feel space, 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 space. Our Lady of Guadalupe, she's like the, Our Lady of Grace. Our Lady of Guadalupe, Our Lady of Grace. And what is grace? One way to think of grace is space. Space is beautiful spaciousness. So your heart is becoming so spacious and as it becomes spacious, now with your hands over your heart, I guide you to ask your beautiful higher self or ask Our Lady of Guadalupe, whatever feels better to you. They're both on the same side or your soul, your heart asking beautiful heart, beautiful soul, beautiful higher self, beautiful Guadalupe. What are the burdens? What are the burdens that I am here to shed? What burdens am I releasing today? What burdens am I releasing today? Am I shedding? Am I clearing? Am I transmuting? Notice whatever word resonates with you. What burdens am I laying down today? And then we're asking, what prayers what prayers are in my heart that I'm bringing forth today? What prayers? Let yourself be brave and see the prayers that maybe you haven't even acknowledged to yourself. Maybe there's a prayer that you've been praying for years and years and years and years and years and years. And it's just a little, little voice. And today you're going to hear it and you're going to acknowledge it. Or maybe there's a prayer that you've been praying for years and years and years and it hasn't been answered and you're almost given up hope on it or you're afraid to get excited about it. But today we're being brave and we're seeing what are the prayers? What are the prayers in your, in your heart? Ask your heart, ask your soul, ask your higher self, ask Guadalupe to show you, show me what are the prayers in my heart? Is there a biggest prayer today? Maybe there's one that's just really loud. And then, and this includes your prayers for other people. If there's prayers for other people, bring them here, but do not forget yourself. Our Lady of Guadalupe is saying that I took so many airplanes. I mean, I took more flights this year than I've ever taken in any year in my life. So I listened to that 
you know, that announcement that the they say at the beginning, the safety things and how they say when the oxygen mask drops, put it on yourself first before you put it on anybody else. I mean, I heard that message so many times this year. And I'm realizing now for the first time, as I tell you this, that it was like, oh, obviously I had to listen to that a hundred times this year because it's that reminder, right? So that's what Guadalupe is saying. Yes, include the prayers for other people if that's in your heart today, but put the oxygen mask on yourself first because that's how you will become the answered prayer for the world. And then finally asking, what dreams Maybe for you, it's more dreams than prayers, but what dreams are in your heart that you're bringing forward today to be blessed by Our Lady of Guadalupe, to be purified? Not because your dreams are bad or wrong, but because we're purifying them from the, what I'm hearing is from the influences of others, from the influences of our own ego structure. We're bringing them to their most pristine condition. What are the prayers? So let's receive that. And what are the dreams? What are the burdens you're letting go of? And as that, as we put that in this space, we welcome your beautiful allies, your guardian angels. We welcome your the beautiful archangels, including Archangel Michael, Archangel Raphael, Archangel Gabriel, and Ariel, and Jophiel, and Raziel, and Azrael, and Haniel. Sandalphon and Zadkiel and Shamuel and so many others. And we welcome the divine feminine ascended masters, of course, Our Lady of Guadalupe, but also Isis and Hathor and Green Tara. All aspects of Mother Mary, the 21 aspects of Green Tara, Mary Magdalene, Joan of Arc, and the entire order of Magdalenas, Kuan Yin, we welcome those divine masculine ascended masters, including beautiful Jesus, beautiful Maha Avatar Babaji, beautiful Buddha and Krishna, and so many others. And so see this circle of miracles around you. And we welcome, of course, the divine mother, father, God, creator, creatrix of all life, the great mystery, whatever word you use, source, the universe to bless our gathering today, that it be more blessed than all the other gatherings, right? More miracles, more blessings, more healing. And so as we end this invocation, I invite you to be courageous and to set the intention that you receive more healing, more blessings, more downloads than you've ever allowed yourself to receive. That we open to receive more than we've ever allowed ourselves to receive. And with that, we bring the palms of our hands together and we bow to each other and our own heart. And we declare the temple doors open. And if you want to share anything in the chat about what are your prayers, what are you releasing, what burdens are you laying down, what dreams are you are being blessed today, are coming into alignment, write it in the chat. There is so much power in us sharing together. Now, I do want to say, I do have my little Ishel, my pregnant Ishel that is with the names of all participants in here. And at the end, I will do that, um, that raffle, that plug. Sarah saying, laying down obligations and fear. Yes. Thank you, Sarah, for sharing that. Absolutely. And, you know, it's so interesting because as I hear that, right, releasing obligations, it's so interesting because I find Our Lady of Guadalupe, she is such, you know, one of the names I've shared this before for her is Mi General, my general, right? And because what does she do? She gives marching orders. But her marching order orders are not like from a dictator or our ego or others. Her marching orders are basically follow your soul's guidance. She's here to remind us of what we really came here to do. So releasing obligations, absolutely. Those obligations that keep us from fulfilling our, our obligation, right? Which is sharing our medicine. So thank you, Sarah, for bringing that here. Yes. And fear, yes. You know, I posted a picture today of Guadalupe and Joan of Arc. I was stunned to walk in one of the beautiful historic cathedrals here. And there was an altar Guadalupe and Joan of Arc was next to her. I've in all my travels in Mexico, I've never seen a Joan of Arc 
statue. I, I really connect with Joan of Arc. And it was like, they were both there and Joan of Arc had her banner and her sword and there was Guadalupe shining bright. And I was like, oh my gosh. And it was like, yes, right? With this, this battalion of priestesses, of healers, of way showers. And so we are here, right? To take up arms, not arms of destruction, but of love. And how do we lay down fear is we, we step right into it. Right? We step right into that fear and let the light of our soul dissolve it. Running from it just causes us to chase, causes that fear to keep chasing us. So thank you, Sarah. Michelle, laying down that I don't have to do it all myself. I can ask for help. Yes. And that's such a wonderful thing, right? Because Guadalupe, again, what do the Ascender Masters say? They're like, let us do the heavy lifting. Which, by the way, if you guys notice, I have white lilies. I've never bought white lilies in my life. I had not realized how gorgeous and beautiful they are. I mean, they look fake, but they're real. I was in a little market yesterday, and there they were, these beautiful farmers that grow all this amazing food and they apparently grow white lilies. But the reason I'm bringing that, Michelle, is I shared months ago, I don't even remember in my blog, right? That dream I had with Jesus and the white lilies. You can look at my website if you didn't read it. The short version is he gave me these white lilies that were glowing, emanating. And he was having me place them on all this on this battlefield that was had seen so much death and destruction and pain and loss. And it was like, but what he was saying was what I've heard them say many times, let me do the heavy lifting. Let these ascended masters do the heavy lifting. Yes, there's a role for us to play, but we're not meant to carry the burdens of the world. There is a role for us to play and, and they carry because they're ascended they carry the burdens. So thank you. Ask for help. Yes, for those people on the earth plane and for those angels and ascended masters. Jennifer, I release fear of not being good enough. I am enough and abundant and always. Yes. Oh, Jennifer, absolutely. You know, I really feel that's the, you know, the priestesses have suffered enough. The greatest suffering hasn't been burned, being burned at the stake or all the horrible things that happen to priestesses, to, to women healers. It is the, the brainwashing that has led to us not believing in ourselves, to think we're not worthy, right? It's, it is, yes, letting that go. Pamela, releasing people with love that are not in sync with my highest good. Yes, we release all of those people, all of those relationships. They are released with love. They are no lo longer aligned with our path. We release them with love and we trust that they will be led on their path. Thank you, Pamela. Jill, fear of feeling, buffering addictions. Yes. Oh my gosh. I've been, and, and you know, I'm so glad you're saying that, Jill, because I really feel that as we go into these activations with Guadalupe, part of that, that light is a shield, not a buffering shield, but is a shield that, helps us to have the space to be with the feelings and not become overwhelmed with them. Not only our feelings, but the feelings in the collective, right? The suffering and pain that's in the collective, right? The grief that's in the collective. It can be so challenging, especially if we're sensitive to, to allow ourselves to feel our feelings, let alone the collective grief. But we're not meant to we're not meant to embody the grief of the world. We're meant to witness it with compassion and that's different. So thank you, Jill, for bringing that. Sophia, remembering my love and dream of dancing and singing. Yes, I love that. Absolutely. That's so beautiful. And that's for everyone, right? Your dreams, your what brings you joy. That's part of the re revolution that we're in is, can we hold our joy through the pain of the world? Not from a place of burying our head in the sand, but you know, our ego would tell us that it's wrong to be joyful right now when there's so much suffering, but we have to hold the vibration of joy or it's gonna be, or it would be lost. We can 
we can be experiencing sadness and remember our love and dreams and joy. Prayer to stand fully in my power and work at a pace that feeds me and brings abundance to my family. Yes, Sarah. Yes, soulful pace. And that's going to come in when we do this, um, your golden timeline. <laughs> my husband, Greg, was reading it. He's like, what does that mean? <laughs> I was like, but it's like the most blessed path, right? That's what it's going to be. It's like the path that it, it is. It is that pacing that helps you stand in your power, bless the world, be in service how you're meant to be. And, but, but do that from a place of being full overflowing, right? Yes. Jill receive compassion, my own hidden medicine and grace. Compa yes. Yes. Beautiful grace, your medicine. Gail, I haven't connected with you in so long. So glad you're here. Releasing that I'm not good enough, fear, doubt. Yes. That is just being burned away today, everyone. Yes, we're releasing that. And when we say that, like this is what I want to say. I've been enough of in enough of these ceremonies that I understand what happens. Like for some of you, it might be like, oh my gosh, I never feel not good enough again, ever. But what I find for me, what it is, is that I'll be in situations that used to trigger me a lot. And it's almost like my ego wants to reach out to, wants to like find, how do I explain it? You'll find yourself in a situation that in the past would have triggered that insecurity. It's such a habit that you might find yourself going to it like, oh, gosh, yeah. But then you're like, wait, I don't feel that bad. I actually don't I actually don't feel that. But I feel like I should feel bad, but I don't feel bad. It's like we're recalibrating. So everybody just be prepared for that. That's usually how it happens. It's like your ego is going to want to go back to that old wound, but the wound's not there there and so that's the place where we pray or we ask for grace or we're like okay i'm gonna breathe and i'm just gonna let there be space and grace there because i healed that up okay maureen releasing old patterns that are keeping me my true soul self from coming through and sharing my light yes oh my gosh yes all the old patterns all the old programming absolutely sophia laying down my belief that i had to adhere to others limiting beliefs Oh my gosh, yes, those old vows and oaths, right? Like I have to believe what you believe. I have, you know, being loyal to my family means I have to have your same burdens and your same programming and stay in the same vibration. No, we're here to lead them out of it by standing in the new vibration ourselves. Suzanne, releasing fear of not feeling safe and receiving trust. Yes, yes. That not feeling safe is so huge. Thank you, Suzanne. And I feel Guadalupe and I feel... Joan of Arc with her armor, you know, she appeared to me in a dream once with a fuchsia armor. It was like hot pink armor. And I was like, oh my gosh. And so I always think of that. So I feel that Suzanne, I feel her, feel her standing with you dreams. Famous angel coach. Thank you, Jill. Yes. Let's see some of these dreams. Yes. Jill, famous angel coach, total financial freedom, be authentically of service to the earth angels, create my legacy of love. Yes, yes, yes. Absolutely. And reading that, what I'm reminded of, you know, influencers, right? And it, it's it's such a mind trap. But I was, I've shared this before. I remember one time connecting with Jesus and on all these divine beings and realizing, wait, they're the original influencers. Like they can, you know, like that's what, it's that soul success, right? Being famous to those earth angels, Jill, that you're here to lead. Yes, Sophia bringing in my wisdom and what and my experience. Yes, your story is so valuable, Sophia. And that goes for everyone. DES, I'm not sure who that is, but releasing old wounds and beliefs of not good enough, being unlovable. I'm embodying that I am enough, lovable and ready to shine brightly. Yes. For some reason, I'm really guided to read these, but I'm just going to start. Oh my gosh, brainwashing. Yes, clearing that high sensitivity, embracing that. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. High sensitivity. Absolutely. I posted on cacao, the medicine of cacao today. I'm going to be sharing that more in the near future. But just for you to know, cacao is such a medicine to help us with that, to help us who are these sensitive souls who are here to bring so much light. We already brought so much light. And we can be held back by our fear of being overwhelmed by the world. I mean, cacao, grandmother cacao, as she has me call her. 
Jennifer, receiving the knowing that my path is divinely guided. There is no wrong way. Yes. Gail, yes, Lisa, the trigger. I question the voice in my head. I try to tell it that I'm not listening to you. Yes. Thank you, Gail, for sharing that. That's so beautiful. So let's go through this list of things that we're going to do today because we're going to do all of them. One, your word for 2024. I know many of you have received your words in the Guadalupe gatherings. If you've never done this before, it's this whole idea. I didn't make it up. Obviously, you'll see it all over. But it's this whole idea that there can be a word that your soul gives you that represents, that acts like an anchor point to the year. But the key is that you're not making up the word through your intellect. Your soul is giving you the word. In this case, Guadalupe, right, is the messenger for your word. Now, I don't want you to put any pressure on yourself. You're like, oh my gosh, my word. And you don't hear anything today. That's fine. You're receiving it in your heart and it's going to come to you at the perfect time. Now, if you're like, I don't want a word, then you don't have to have a word, okay? Just say, no, thank you. My word for 2023 was irresistible. I mean, who would have chosen that word? And it was like, I did the Guadalupe gathering. I didn't receive a word there because I was facilitating the ceremony. And I remember afterwards, Guadalupe was like, lay down in bed for a few minutes. And I was like, okay, I was lying down. And then I got this image of this like golden rose and the word irresistible came out of it. And I was like, okay, I'm going to trust that. I didn't understand fully the meaning. I mean, I understood what irresistible meant, but there were so many aspects of that word that I've lived this year. One of them being one that I hadn't initially thought of was, oh, not having resistance. Like really dissolving my resistance. And there were so many things I had to do to get to this point today four months in, four and a half months in to living in Mexico. <laughs> so that's what we're going to do. That's one thing. We're going to, there's going to be an attunement to activate your solar light. So this solar light that you see on Guadalupe, we all have it. You already have it, but it's like activated, awaken it, activate it stronger. It's built from your own medicine. It's built from the enlightened me medicine of your ancestors Right. So that's number two. Well, it might not be in this order, but I'm just reminding you what, what we're doing. And then blessing your. How do I the what I wrote was aligning you with the highest timeline in 2024. What does that mean? Your timeline. So it's this. It it's the highest path of 2024. So if you visualize yourself in the middle and there's all these paths. Right. There's all you could take this path. 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 And yeah, some of them are awful. And you're like, I'm not going to take those. But some of them are pretty good. And you're like, that would be cool. That could be a cool path. But your soul. And when I say soul, I mean Our Lady of Guadalupe knows the one path that is your highest path of the year. That is the path that will bring the most blessings to you and the world. It's like what Sarah had said. It's the path that will put you in that pacing that is just right for you. And don't get me wrong, part of the pacing, there will be times where it'll be super fast, right? Where you're like, oh my gosh, you know, buckle your seatbelt. Like those three months before we left Chicago, I mean, it was in intense, right? It was a lot, but that was the pace for that moment, right? And so, and then there's, but then throughout that, my guidance was like, slow down, even though, even though it was so sped up, it was like, slow down, keep breathing, connect with your heart, discern. So that's the, the highest timeline. Along with that is Reiki, just Reiki for the whole year, 2023, everything from January to this moment, and actually to December 31st, to this moment, to clear anything that's still lingering, that your soul's like, you don't need to take this with you in 2024. I will, on December 20, 20th, I think, I'm doing the solstice, Mother Mary, light activation class. I feel like that's almost like part two of this. So I'll share the links at the end. You might want to join that as well for this, because I feel like this is going to be such a release. And then on the 20th, it'll be such an integration. And we've made all the space, all the space, all the space, all the space, all the space. And let's activate the light codes then in the solstice portal. Uh, any channeled messages that come up from Guadalupe, I will share with you. And of course, I'm, I have my Oracle cards right here and I will pull... Um, the name from the Ishel vessel to see who will receive the, the giveaway of the mother of the Guadalupe Oracle reading. And then I'll share some invitations, okay?
That's what we're going to do. So let me just read. Sophia said, I'm calling in my groundedness and communion with the lands and Mother Earth for really, really following through now. Yes. Thank you for bringing that, Sophia. Right, Part of our priestess medicine, it is planetary healing. We, Our lives are being rearranged to be put in the precise places on the earth where we're needed. Now, it doesn't mean you have to relocate countries like I did. I mean, for some of you, it might mean that. But it just means you're going to be always put at the right place at the right time doing the right thing. It might be as simple as you suddenly went to a new grocery store and you don't even know it, but you're supposed to be in that grocery store because that grocery store needs healing and you walking in that grocery store is going to initiate that healing. That doesn't mean you have to go around rescuing people at all, but planetary healing is absolutely part of priestess medicine. So Sophia, thank you for naming that for everyone to start to understand, well, how am I being called to work on the land? You know, maybe it is just when I take walks and I'm just, I'm just a vessel and the divine mother can just bless the earth through me. Or maybe it's more intentional, right? More gathering communities together, or, you know, like some of the work that I am doing or, or being here in Mexico, or I'm being guided to go to different parts of kind of historical areas where there was a lot of death, a lot of bloodshed, and I'm being really guided to pray there or bring crystals or all sorts of things, right? Gail saying, a soul vow. Yes, I love that you're, and I don't know exactly what you mean by that, but what I'm, oh, okay, yes. But I do want to say there's a difference between our, you know, the vows and oaths that we took, or we took even this lifetime that we need to release. And then our vow to our soul, our commitment to our soul. Like I committed, what did you commit to do in this lifetime? Why did you say, yep, sign me up. That's what I'm going to do in this lifetime. And yep, I know there's going to be all these tests. And I know I'm going to forget that I'm divine. And I know I'm going to forget that I have friends in high places, as one of my teachers says, you know, that we have Mother Mary and other ascended masters to help us. But sign me up. I'm, I want to go down there on earth and, and do this. We all signed up for it, even when it feels like, whoa, we're rethinking, right, sometimes. So let's begin. I mean, we have been beginning, but let's step into ceremony. A little more explicitly. I want to read first. Mother Mary's reminding me. I pulled a card. I pulled three, but this is the one I'm invited to share for our gathering today. We got Our Lady of Quiet Blossoming. This is from the Mother Mary Oracle. Look at this beautiful woman. And I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna read all of it because it's long, but I'm gonna read this one little part. It says, this oracle comes with a special message. Do not give up. Do not let go of your dreams. Stay at it. Keep working on yourself. If you are struggling to have faith, heal with Mother Mary. Soon enough, your uncertainty or tentativeness will be replaced with great confidence, certainty, and knowing until that moment, and even then, trust without condition. All right, really take those words in. And we are being guided to be the people that hold on to the trust, the faith, the love, the light, the unity consciousness, even when things seem impossible. That doesn't mean that, that we don't doubt it at times, but we're being guided more and more to keep coming back, keep coming back to the trust. And when we're having a hard time finding it, we keep, we ask, we ask for help. So with that, I invite you to close your eyes and take some cleansing breaths. And I, if you have a journal with you, pen and paper, you might want to have that with you in case you want to write down anything, but you also will get the replay of this. And as you close your eyes, just feeling beautiful Mother Mary, beautiful Guadalupe. And I see a circle. We're all in a circle. And just look at all these beautiful people in this circle. Even if you don't know who they are, wow, we all answered this invitation. You know, from across really the world.
And so from across the country, the United States, from across the world, we're each connected together right now, whether you're here live or in the replay. And at the center of the circle starts to appear the form of Guadalupe. with her cloak of stars, with her light. And the stars on her cloak are so bright and radiant. The sun behind her is so bright and radiant. The moon under her feet is radiant as well. And she says again, am I not here who am your mother? Am I not here who knows you and loves you? She reminds you that she knows you by your name. And as, as she stands here, the first thing that she is going to do is clean, clear, heal, anything that's left over from this year. And so although we see Guadalupe at the center of the circle, blessing our whole group, right now you notice as you lean back that there's a beautiful tree behind you, the spirit of a tree. The trunk of the tree is there. And as you stand there leaning on the tree, you feel the trees supporting you as you receive these healings and activations. Now in your physical self, if you wanna lie down, feel free to lie down or whatever feels comfortable to you. But here in the inner world, you're standing in this beautiful circle with these other beautiful priestesses this tree that appeared just for you is behind you. And now Guadalupe, Our Lady of Guadalupe, Tonantzin, Our Lady of Tepeyac, Our Lady of Grace, so many names to her, Mi General. She stands before you now. So everybody has their own Guadalupe standing before them now. And as she stands before you, again, she looks into your eyes and she says again, am I not here who am your mother? And as she stands before you, she reminds you that she is not bound by time and space. She is not bound by linear time, so she can go to the past, to the future. She can go to lifetimes, to parallel lives. But in this moment, she stands before you today on December 10th, 2023, or whenever you're watching this. And she is going to walk backwards all the way to the beginning of this year, January 1st, 2023. So she stands before you, and I know in her image, she's got her hands in prayer pose, but right now she's got her arms on her side. Guadalupe stands before you with her radiant rays of light. And she walks back. She's walking back, back, back. Her hands our blessing every day. She's going back in time. She's blessing December 9th, December 8th, 7th, 6th, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. She goes through November. She's blessing. And what she's doing with her hands is not just blessing. She's blessing, but she's clearing. If there's any leftover attachment, suffering, uh, loose ends, if any of your energy is still stuck in any day of the year, maybe there was something traumatic, some conversation that really hurt you or something, a loss, and your energy is still attached to that moment with your 
permission because you have free will. She can clear all of that. And she reassures you, she's not clearing cords of love. She's clearing what is unnecessary. As she goes through all of November, all the way through November 1st, and she goes back to October, October 31st, and she goes through every day blessing. She says every hour, every minute, every second, she is touching with her hands and she's clearing, healing, blessing, releasing, dissolving. And as she goes back to September, all the days of September doing the same, and you might be receiving memories and just allow it to happen. Don't stress. Don't try to remember everything. Just whatever comes up is fine. As she goes through September, blessing, clearing, dissolving every day, every hour, every minute, every second of September. All right, including through the autumn equinox. Some of you were with me on that time, aren't we? Set an intention for the equinox. And so she's connecting with those prayers, those dreams you had at that time as she goes back to August, right around the Lion's Gate. Every day in August now, she's blessing, she's clearing. If there were days that you slept walk through, she's like some of you experienced such loss or such change or such transformation or such exhaustion. There's some days that you were just not present and there's no judgment. She's not judging it. She's just blessing everything. If there was any missed opportunity, she's bringing it back into alignment. All of the days in August, all of the hours, the minutes, the seconds, as she goes through July, same through July, all of it being cleared. If there was any experience of shame or disappointment, if you were beating yourself up during any of these days, she's coming to bless Every minute, hour, minute, second, as she reminds you, am I not here who am your mother? I am here. I am here. I am here with so much compassion, so much understanding, so much love, so many miracles. And she goes back, 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 back to June, halfway through the year, right, of 2023. And she's blessing every day there. All of the days, all of the days, any loss, any exhaustion, any celebrations you had, she's magnifying those. Maybe there's some so much courage, she's saying, so many steps that you took that maybe you're not even acknowledging, you haven't even celebrated or you already forgot. And so she's highlighting the blessings, highlighting your courage, highlighting all the steps you took. And again, dissolving, releasing, blessing every hour, every minute, every second of June through the solstice, the summer solstice. Here we are almost at the winter solstice. Or depending where you are in the world, it might not be the winter solstice, but solstice to solstice. Moving back to May. May, 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 every day in May being blessed. Blessed, blessed. Cleared and healed. All the hours, all the minutes all the seconds, all the way to the beginning of May, April, April, which brought so much of that energy of resurrection and new birth. She's blessing your celebrations, highlighting your courage, highlighting all the way you help the world, all the ways, but also dissolving, clearing, tying loose ends, moving back, 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 back through all of April. Back, back through March, the spring equinox or whatever equinox, wherever you were in the world, clearing, dissolving, making right, aligning, clearing, dissolving, anything you're not meant to take with you in 2024, it's being cleared. We go back to February, every hour, minute, day of February, the second month of the year, all the way back there, she's going all the way, every hour. This is how beloved you are. This is how much help you can receive. Let yourself receive it. Let yourself receive all of these blessings, all of this healing, all of this clearing. If there are tears that still need to be shed, let them flow. As you move to January, the first month of the year, moving through that last day of January, moving through all the hours, the minutes, the days, all the way to January 1st.
And so she stands in January 1st, looking at you now here on December 10th or wherever you're watching this. So you see her almost like a sun and she's walking back now down towards you. <sighs> Aligning, dissolving, healing, clearing, transmuting, celebrating, highlighting, blessing, blessing, blessing as she stands before you right now again. And now she brings you to the center of the circle and at the center, and you know, she's Guadalupe. She, so she does this with each of us, each of you. You stand in the circle and you notice there's all these paths. There's all these paths. There's all these doors. And as I said before, some of them, you're like, mm, not interested. You're like looking at them like, no, that I don't even like that path. But there's some paths that look very bright and very radiant, some doors that look beautiful. But you're standing there at the crossroads with Our Lady of Guadalupe, with your soul. And you're like, which one's the path? And you set that intention. You're like, align me with my highest timeline in 2024. That path, that doorway that will bring me the most blessings, most abundance in all levels and the world. It's not either or. That's the old paradigm. That was a lie we were told. This is the path that will bless the world, that will be your greatest service, legacy of love, and that will bless you the most with abundance of time, finances, joy, connections, relationships, resources, health, vitality, creative, creativity, fun, financial security, health. And so that is the path. That is the highest timeline. And so as we declare that together, you notice that all paths dissolve, all the doors dissolve, and there's one. There's one golden path that is the highest path. It is beautiful. It is radiant. There's a beautiful golden door there. And you look at it and you know, oh my gosh, that is my highest timeline of 2024. That is it right there. But before we cross it, Our Lady of Guadalupe and all of your teams of allies, your enlightened ancestors, are bringing healing to heal those wounds of unworthiness, to heal the attachments to suffering, to heal those doubts that believe you're not worthy of having the highest timeline, or that it's selfish, or that it's wrong, or that somehow other people will miss out, or that if you go on the highest timeline, you will lose relationships. And she's reassuring you that if there are indeed any relationships lost, they were not meant to be for you. That as you stand on the highest timeline, you're creating a blueprint, a pathway for your loved ones to come to their highest timeline when they choose it. The priestesses have suffered enough. Your leadership, your light is needed more than ever. You will be able to help more people, more of the planetary healing when you choose this timeline. And yet, if you don't choose it, you are loved the same. Our Lady of Guadalupe really wants you to know that. Your soul really wants you to know that. If you decide that you don't want to choose that timeline, you are still loved equally. You are not loved more for choosing that timeline. You are loved, you are loved, you are loved no matter what timeline you choose. And if you would like to choose that one, I believe if you are here, that was part of your mission, part of your marching orders, part of what you committed to doing in this lifetime is to do just that to choose the highest timeline because you knew that was a timeline that was actually going to create your legacy of love. But you knew it would create, it would require so much courage. And so Our Lady of Guadalupe stands before you and first she has a gift. She brings you this folded cloak of stars for you. And so take that cloak of stars and wrap it around Wrap it around your shoulders, this beautiful cloak of stars. I 
right? And this cloak of stars as it's wrapped around your shoulders, it feels so beautiful. The stars on the cloak are activated and they're attuning to your meridians, your chakras. And you're releasing as a tree is still behind you. That's why the tree is there. You're releasing through the roots of this tree into the earth, any blocks to receiving your highest timeline. The old programming, the old burdens, the old vows and oaths and contracts, the attachment to suffering, all of it. As Our Lady of Guadalupe stands before you and radiates her solar light, with her light shining so brightly, all these burdens are being released down into the earth. And as she does this, your crown chakra spirals open more. The trees of this tree are helping with the spiraling of your crown chakra. And Our Lady of Guadalupe brings her hands gently over the crown of your head. Gently, gently, gently. Gently, gently, gently. And as she does that, she spirals open your soul star chakra, which is the chakra, the energy center. Don't worry if you don't know anything about chakras. That's okay. It's an energy center hovering 12 to 18 inches over your crown. She's opening that pathway. She's preparing you for this attunement of your solar radiance. And she asks you, she looks into your eyes and she asks you, are you ready to receive this attunement? Are you willing to receive it? She says, don't worry about being ready because you are ready if you're here. But she's asking you, do you want to receive this attunement? And if you want to receive this attunement, let her know, say yes. Yes. I'm open to receiving this attunement, yes. Please know that this is coming from your soul. But if you don't feel ready, just politely to say, no, I'm not ready yet. And you can always come back to the recording. But if you are here, she's saying you are ready. You are ready. So if you choose to say yes, say yes. And as that happens, if you're saying yes, she brings her hands over the crown of your head and she's doing these beautiful mudras. Mudras with her hands. Mudras are hand gestures. And she's clearing your crown chakra, taking out the old programming that says it's not safe to be seen. It's not safe to be in my power. Or if I'm in my power, I'm going to be depleted because I have to heal everybody. Nope. She's clearing all of that, 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 all of that for this pristine discernment of your power, of your light. Clearing the, ve the veils of amnesia. Clearing your third eye so that you can fully see yourself as you truly are. And so she brings forward this attunement from the light of your soul and the light of divinity coming down like a lightning bolt. And yet gentle like honey as it comes down the crown of your head, moving down to your third eye, your throat, your heart, your solar plexus, sacral root, down into the earth. You are attuning. And Guadalupe steps in front of you again, and her aura is radiating as your auric field now. This attunement, you're filled with light, your solar light, your solar light, your solar light. It's expanding, filling your whole body, and it comes out into your auric field, and you have your own beautiful sunlight that is radiating. And Guadalupe says those words that are in uh, that beautiful book, The Sophia Code, which some of you know, and it's okay if you don't know it, but this is a sentence from that book that I'm being guided to share. She's saying, say this, it is safe for me to remember and reveal who I am now. It is safe for me to remember and reveal who I am now. It is safe 
for me to remember and reveal who I am now. And now she takes your hand as you step forward to that golden path through that golden door that is your highest timeline of 2024. And you are stepping on it now, even though it's not the end of the year yet, we're doing this through quantum timeline. Step on that path, step on that path, be on that path. This is your path, your highest path of 2024. It is safe for me to remember and reveal who I am now. It is safe for me to remember and reveal who I am now. It is safe for me to be that beacon of light. It is safe for me to be seen. It is safe for me to shine my light in the darkest of places. It is safe. It is time. I am here. Am I not here who am your mother? She reminds you. I am here. I am here. And so as you stand in this timeline, see how bright it is, how radiant, how safe, how protected. See all of humanity turning to look at you on this timeline. And notice that there's some humans that get lit up when they look at you. Like, oh, there's a beautiful contract you have with them. Not an old vow, not karmic contracts. No, this is a dharma agreement. Some of these people are here to help you, to bless you, to bring healing to you. They're here as resources, as support. So just notice like, ooh, you see those stars lighting up, those people. And some are people that are here to be your clients, your students, people that you're here to help, to lead, to lead by example, to uplift, to connect with. You don't need to know who they are, but maybe you're shown. And so as you stand here on your beautiful timeline, with the cloak of stars, with the sun radiating from you, from every pore of your body. Your beautiful soul. As you look out into the timeline, this path, you see at the end of the path, so December 31st, 2024, you see a bright sun like what is that brilliance what is that radiance and as you ask that sun starts to get closer and closer and closer to you right it's coming from december 31st 2024 guadalupe is standing next to you it's coming closer it comes through november 2024 october 2024 sorry October, September 2024, August, July, June, May. It's getting closer, April, March. Somehow this gorgeous, beautiful, stunning sun is not burning your eyes, but it's very bright. Gets closer and closer and you gasp as you recognize that it is you. It is you filled with your soul's light. And so look into your own face this future you. And this future you, this is the you. It's so grateful for the present you. It's like, I wouldn't be here without you, without all the action steps you're going to take, without all of the courage, without all of the faith and trust, without all of the initiations you're going through. And there you are with your future you and Guadalupe, your future you is radiant, filled with your soul. And you ask her, or however your future you shows up, what is my word for 2024? What is my word? What is my word? And maybe you see the word as a symbol or just as light that comes into your heart. Or maybe you heard what the word is, but just ask, what is my word? Show me my word. Show me my word for 2024. Show 
Receive it in your heart. Trust that it is there, even if you haven't heard it yet. And this you, this future you, looks at you with so much love. She's like, you've got this. 2024 is going to be the best year yet. Full of blessings and grace full of healing and joy, full of abundance and joyful surprises. And so you lean back as the tree appears behind you again, and this beautiful tree helps integrate and ground all of this healing and activation. Your beautiful soul activates these healings, attunements, activation across all four levels of your being, physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, across all dimensions of time. Feel the earth underneath you as you are back in your physical space. This cloak of stars, Guadalupe is saying you can always, always call on it. And before we step out of ceremony, there's one last gift. Guadalupe calls on her beautiful angels. It's your guardian angels. And it's interesting. I'm hearing that these are two, two guardian angels that are specific for 2024. And they're coming and they're holding, they're holding this full length mirror. And one angel's holding it on one side and the other on the other side. And they want you to look at yourself in this beautiful mirror. And this is a mirror that shows you your true self. Look into this mirror and see what you see. It is safe for you to remember and reveal who you are now. It is safe. For you to remember and reveal who you are now. It is safe for you to remember and reveal who you are now. And your soul and higher self recalibrate all of your chakras so that they're at appropriate size to your everyday activities. You ask your guardian angels to bring you, continue to bring you signs and synchronicities after our gathering is complete to protect your path. We bring the palms of our hands together and we bow to each other and our own heart with a namaste. Namaste, everyone. Take your time, take some nice breaths. Take some nice stretches, perhaps. If there's something you need to write down, take a moment to write it down on your journal. And of course, if you wanna share anything in the chat, please feel free. Whether you share your word, if you know what your word is, or just anything that came forward as we were doing the ceremony. <laughs> Michelle is sharing grace is your word for 2024. That's beautiful, Michelle. And so I want to let everybody know, you know, the word is a gift and it'll keep on giving you gifts the more you connect with it, right? So whether you put it somewhere um, where you will see it or Remember, it's like Harry Potter, right? The wand chooses the wizard. The word chooses the person. So this word chose you. And so be in conversation with it. it it's always surprising. It's always more than we think it is, like irresistible, right? I, I thought it was one thing, and it was that, but it was also like, oh, can I become irresistible in the sense of not having resistance, <laughs> you know? 
And let's see, let me read some of these. Gail, freedom. I love that freedom to be authentic, freedom to speak my truth. Yes, Sarah, power. Love that power. Yes. Jill, your word is abundance. Beautiful. Sarah, I feel blessed to be here. I feel so blessed to be here. I'm so blessed you're here and all of you are here. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome, Jill. I saw myself as a lioness with a heart of gold. Oh my gosh, Michelle, I love that. My word is success in all caps. Sophia, I love that. And for those of you, if you're still not sure your word, don't panic. It's going to come. And if you received a word and you're like, I don't want that word, <laughs> you know, that can happen. Just pray about it. Just meditate about it. Just ask to be shown. Jan, word anew. <gasps> We'll need to sit with that. Yes. I love when I have words like that, where I'm like, what exactly does that mean? <laughs> right? And I think, you know, I, like I said, for everybody, be with your word. So I want a couple of things to remind you of, and you can keep writing in the chat because I love reading the words. One, this coming Friday is another masterclass. And this is all about stepping out of confusion into clarity. Now, the master classes are different than this. Yes, I do lead a little meditation, but it's really practical tools. It's really talking about confusion. What is confusion? How is it that we indulge in confusion? Just like indulging in sugar, we can indulge in confusion. Why does our ego use confusion? And how can we step out of confusion into the clarity of our soul? I'm so excited. It's another free masterclass. So if you want to join that, please go to that. And I will be sharing a very special 2024 invitation there next Wednesday. And you know what? I'm going to sh share all the links because I had them ready this time. Next Wednesday is the solstice um, class. That is $33. I would love for you to join me for that. Activating your, what did Mother Mary said specifically? We're activating past life gifts parts of your soul medicine that just haven't been able to awaken yet for many reasons. And now is the time. So that'll be then. And I still have a few spots for the free breakthrough consultation with me. That's a one hour session with me, consult with me, where I will help you talk about get out of confusion and into clarity to really know like, where are you going? How do you get there? What is the biggest block Sometimes we think the biggest block is one thing and it's not, that's not the thing. It's this other thing. So I would love to connect with you if you want to, you know, I'll take you through a very um, gentle but powerful process as I ask you these empowering questions to help diagnose right, where it is that you need help and a simple solution for it. And yes, I will also share my awesome coaching program. I'm looking, you know, I have so many amazing coaching clients and I have space for a few more in 2024. So I'm looking to help you and support you and be with you through the year. Imagine giving yourself the gift of that. Okay. So I'm going to, I want to read your comments, but I want to put the, the links here for all this stuff. And I'll also send it in an email. But if you want to do any of those and for the breakthrough consultation, if you look, I think there's like two spots left. Yeah. Uh, but you're like, I really would love to do that. The time doesn't work for me. Email me. And there's, you know, sometimes people kind of reschedule things and openings show up. Okay. So let me send this first. Okay. Breakthrough consult. That's the link out of confusion in the Clarity Masterclass, Mother Mary Solstice Code Activation. Okay. And if you're not on my mailing list, be on there because that will help you see that. So I want to read what else? D, such a deep, deep cellular journey. My word is liberation. Denise. Okay. Thank you, Denise. Deep, deep cellular journey. That's how I felt it. Like it was a deep, like I feel like every cell has that golden aura. Like picture that every cell in your body radiating that light, every cell having that auric field, the nucleus in each of our cells. That's how clear. I mean, when mother, when our lady of Guadalupe was walking back to all the months, you know, every hour, every minute, every day, she wasn't skipping anything, right? She was, I mean, that's how loved we are. That's how loved we are. And that everything 
can come into alignment, right? Uh, my word is discipline and I was challenged by it. Oh, who is that? For some reason, this is, if somebody could tell me who that is, discipline, this is what I want to tell you. Remember that discipline, the root word of that is disciple. Our ego has used discipline to mean something very like rigid and, and a lot of us are like, oh, we don't want that. We want to go into the ease of our soul. But disciple is being a disciple to your soul, having the discipline, the commitment to be. And what does disciple mean? Student, to be a student of your soul. So that's what comes to me with that. Just, just sharing that. Um, let's see what else. The shadow of abundance is lack, scarcity, and poverty consciousness, but this is not just about money and finances, but in all parts of my love. Yes, absolutely. And I want to share because Jill and I, Jill has is one example. Somebody's been doing word of the year for a while, me too. And sometimes what happens, you know, you pick a word like abundance and you experience the opposite at first. So this is what I want to say about that. If that happens, that's totally normal. And I also want to set the intention that we're also done with that. Let's just say, because what is, why do we experience the opposite? It's not because it's a test or we're being punished. It's our own subconscious stuff coming up to the surface. So let's have so much compassion for ourselves, so much love and ask our Lady of Guadalupe to make that process easy. Like that prayer that, you know, one of my teachers says, okay, God, divine mother, whatever you want to say, surprise me, show me how easy it can be. Right, so let's put that in there as well. Uh, oh, yes, I just said that, the disciple to your soul. Sophia, I love meeting you for the first time in this lifetime. Sophia, I am so glad. I feel like she's going to be such an ally for you. She is so much, I mean, there's so much about her, but planetary healing and grid work is absolutely one of the things she's in. In fact, people have traced the stars on her cloak to connect them to certain constellations. I mean, this is how awesome she is. So anyway, I think she's going to be great. Suzanne, thank you. What exactly does it mean when we who is your mother? Am I not here who am your mother? So basically what she's saying, and you know, it's best translated into English and it was first spoken, not even in Spanish, in Nahuatl to Juan Diego. But basically she's saying, you have nothing to worry about. I'm your mom. I'm here for you. And not only, I mean, She's here for us and she has all the power of the world behind her, right? So that's what, when Juan Diego was scared because she was asking him to go tell the bishop to build a, a cathedral in her honor. And he was like, he's not going to believe me. I'm, you know, they're not going to believe what I'm saying or or I don't have time to go talk to him because my uncle is sick. There's all these stories. There's there's reasons why Juan Diego was scared, was nervous, was didn't want to let her down. I mean, how many times have we felt that where we have, we feel like we have divine marching orders, right? I'm I'm here to lead the priestesses of the world, right? But feel if I feel like, but I don't feel like I'm doing a good job or I don't feel like I'm getting their attention or I don't feel like I'm I have the resources I need for that. And we're scared, whatever the fears are. And she comes in and she says, wait, I'm here. Remember who your mother is. It's Our Lady of Guadalupe or Mother Mary, Kuan Yin, right? They're all on the same side. You have nothing to worry about. You have friends in high places. I'm your mom. You have nothing to worry about. That's what Suzanne, that's what she means. <laughs> so I hope that helps. Jill, parts of my life. Oh, yes. Parts of your life. Abundance. Yes. Regarding my word for 2024, she has said, don't fret. Your word will deepen and mature with you. Oh, I love that, Jan. That's such a divine mother thing to say. Don't fret. It will deepen and mature with you. Chris, okay, discipline. Yes, absolutely. So I really think it's disciple to your soul. Can you have the commitment to become the student of your soul? That's such a beautiful thing, Chris. All right, I know we're over time, so let me do the, let me pull the name from the magical vessel. And um, I will send the replay and I will pull some cards. If you need to leave, you know, feel free to leave, but you have to be here if I call your name. <laughs> so don't leave yet. It's like, so wait, we have a Palo Santo. All right. And please know that everybody is blessed. Whoever gets pulled, it's a blessing for all of us. And I'm just asking Our Lady of Guadalupe to guide it, whoever, whichever name I'm supposed to get from this. Okay. 
Now, I should say this. If I say the name and you're not here, I'm just going to have to put it down and choose another name. Valerie? Valerie, are you here? No, I don't think you're here, Valerie. So I'm going to put you down. Sending you many blessings. Unless you are, then yell or <laughs> put your hand up. Okay. Okay. Suzanne, I believe you are here, Suzanne Keith. Suzanne Keith. You know, this is the one time where I really wish we could all see each other because I want to see like, not that you would do this, Suzanne, but I want to be like, yeah. and then we all clap. Yeah. So let's all congratulate Suzanne. There is your name. Oh my gosh, I am so delighted. So I will be uh, doing a little oracle <laughs> card reading for you um, from Our Lady of Guadalupe. I record it and I, I email it to you as a voice. It's usually like five to six minutes of voice channeled message. Clapping. Yes, we're all clapping for you. <laughs> thank you, everyone. That is so beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank you, everyone. All right. So let's just finish off with pulling some cards and then we will be done. So all right, so let's say that these are just the final message, not final, but final for our ceremony of from Guadalupe, right? Like, what is the message here? So let's hear Barbara. Okay, here we go. And, and Suzanne, just so you know, it takes me a few days. So you'll get this by this coming Friday, okay? Oh, I just have to share with everyone. I've never been in Mexico during our feast day of Guadalupe. I thought it was a big deal in Chicago. It's a whole other level. It starts, the her feast day is on Tuesday. Tomorrow, the celebrations start. Tuesdays, it's like a holiday. Like all banks are closed. There's mass every hour. I mean, I'm not into Catholic mass, but there's mass every hour. There's processions all around the city. There's indigenous dances. I'm like literally freaking out. I'm so so excited. I hope that I can take pictures and take videos and post it on social media. Like there's going to be merch. I keep telling Greg, there's going to be so much Guadalupe merch. Oh my gosh. So anyway, that's super exciting. All right. I'm very excited. Here we go, everybody. Let's see. What is this message? Wait, I feel like she wants me to tune into a specific question. Okay. So what, the, so this is going to be about how do you like about the final days of 2023. So from now till December 31st, what is your message from your soul and Our Lady of Guadalupe? Okay, that's what this one is. From now, because we still have days, right? No day is wasted. So here we go. I'm sorry, if you have to leave, this will be in the recording so you could watch this. All right, this is the message from now to December 31st, in the flow. When I am when I am in the flow, magic happens. All right. So this is the message in the flow. So whatever you know how being in the flow feels in your body. Right. So just notice, like, okay, ask yourself that question. Does this feel in the flow? Does this help me feel in the flow? When am I feeling like I'm going with the current? Not the current of our ego, what everybody else says, but the current of your soul. And look at that dragonfly in her throat. Oh my gosh, I've never noticed that before. Or maybe I did, but I forgot. That feels very important. There's something about your words that are going to be really important. One of them is going to be, no, no, I don't want to do that. Yes, I do want to do this. No, I'm not going to put it off till 2024. I'm going to do that now. We don't have to wait till the new year. There's things you're meant to take action on now. I'm hearing that very clearly, right? There, and then this one, I'm just gonna ask for a message from, um, so what's this one? What else, what else? Yep, for still for the end of the year, what else? Actually, okay, this is from now till the solstice. Okay, now to the winter solstice, what is the message? How do you best align with your soul's guidance? Okay, Guadalupe. Oh my gosh, this is so gorgeous. Okay, talk about solar energy. Ra, share your gift. 
from now till the solstice. This was the message. Share your gift. I don't know what your gift is. You know what your gift is. Share it. You're going to share it as you're in the flow. This is not about rescuing. This is about sharing your gift. And then last card is from your enlightened ancestors and we will be done. All right. What are your enlightened ancestors? These are the ancestors that are here as your allies. They don't want anything from you. They don't have an agenda with you. They share a soul's medicine with you. So these are what I, these are ancestors that in their lifetime, they did some similar work to what you did. So like, for example, Jill does angel coaching. So these enlightened ancestors did something similar. So for everybody, fill in the blank with that. Planetary healing, teaching, whatever it is, okay? So, and then we will be done. All right. Enlightened ancestors. What is the message for all of us? They're also saying this is particularly a message from now on the solstice. It's very interesting. So it's a lot's going to unfold these next few days. Remember, Guadalupe's feast day is the 12th, 12-12. So be prepared for more blessings that day. Oh my gosh, how in the heck did I pull three cards? Okay. <laughs> Hermit, retreat and recharge. So I love the combination of this. Share your gift, but it's reminding you this isn't about overdoing. You're going to have to retreat and recharge. That could be a minute. That could be five minutes or that could be a day. I'm going to go to a Temazcal next Sunday. That's going to be my one of my retreats and recharge a sweat lodge. Okay. And then the next card is, oh my gosh, this is so perfect. Snake, shed old skin. So we're still shedding from now till the solstice. There's going to be still shedding that is happening. Right. And final one. Direction guardian, choose your path. To me, this is the golden path. Look at these animals. The white buffalo, the lion. Is that an eagle, leave, hawk? So what I'm hearing is as you, you're on that golden path, keep meditating on that golden path. Receive more insight. And I really believe in the solstice. We're going to receive more clarity. All right. All right, everybody. My gosh, thank you so much. Let me see what else. Oh, you're welcome, Jennifer. Yes, thank you everyone for congratulating Suzanne. Sophia, yes, embrace the highest timeline. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you, Gail. Everybody, thank you so much. And I hope to see you on Friday for our um, master class. This is the fifth one of the year. Remember, mastery is mastering the basics. Confusion is such a soul time suck. It's so unnecessary. So I'm really excited when, when Mother Mary was like, that's what we're going to clear up. All right. Bye, everyone. I will send you the replay. Bye. <laughs>